In this assignment, we are going to be looking at the heliocentric model of the solar system and the rotational and orbital speed of the Earth. So we are talking about the two prevailing models of the solar system. Heliocentric model of the solar system places the Sun at the center of the solar system, while the geocentric model of the solar system places the Earth at the center of the solar system. And then if you consider this kind of very complex orbits, both models would predict the location of the planets right, at different times throughout the year. If we are looking at the heliocentric model of the solar system, it looks a lot simpler. Each planet orbit the sun, orbits the sun in a path called an ellipse, which is simply an elongated circle. The Earth and the planets revolve around the sun. A planet's revolution is, is its motion around the sun in a path called an orbit. So that would be an orbit. Now we are going to be looking at uh, the Earth orbiting the sun. Everything, of course, not to scale because later on we are going to learn that most of the mass of the solar system has to be contained within the sun. If you're looking at the heliocentric model of the solar system, and the Earth will be much, much smaller. However, you can easily notice in this animation, which is very, very nice to use animations, uh, the orbit of the Earth, right, the elliptical path, and then you also notice sort of a line going to the north and south pole, so that would be the axis of rotation. The Earth is also rotating about the axis of rotation as it orbits around the sun. One full rotation would take 24 hours about the axis of the rotation, of course, and one full orbit around the sun would take one year. So we said, and we are going to learn we already uh, learned that the path of the planets will be elliptical paths rather than circular paths. However, for simplicity, f to calculate the rotation speed and the orbital speed, we are going to consider this path to be a circular path. So some basics for the circle, if you have a radius r, the diameter is going to be twice the radius, and the length around, right, is called the circumference. What is going to be the length around for a circle of a radius r? You can calculate the circumference using this formula 2 times the constant pi times the radius would give you the length around the circle. Now, uh, we have some other basic equation that we use in astronomy, consider motion with constant speed. We are talking about speed to be what? Given by the ratio between the distance traveled and the corresponding time interval. So distance divided by time gives you the speed. If you have this equation, of course, you can reorganize the equation to figure out how long it takes to get somewhere, either you're going to solve for time. Time is going to be um, distance divided by velocity. And then you can figure out how far an object it is, right? How, in terms of distance, if you have the velocity and the time it takes to get there, you can calculate distance using the formula distance is velocity times time. In our case, of course, we want to calculate rotational speed and orbital speed. So we are you're talking about an object moving around the circumference of a circle and then the corresponding time interval to complete the, that uh, orbit. So first we are going to be looking into um, rotational motion and then into orbital motion. For now, again, some other animations showing that throughout the year, the year can be at different distances away from the sun. And then we're going to consider sort of an average distance, and the average distance will be, of course, given in terms of the definition, one astronomical unit. We are going to have to use actually miles, 
uh, one astronomical unit is 93 million miles. So first part of the assignment is to determine the speed due to Earth's rotation. And another wonderful animation shows that, for example, a student sitting somewhere at the equator would have to go on the larger circle and will come back to the same uh, point, right, in a time interval equal to 24 hours. So the question would be, what's going to be the speed of a student sitting on the surface of the Earth at the equator? To calculate speed, you are going to take what? The length around the equator, the circumference, the radius is given, and it takes 24 hours to complete one rotation. Therefore, the speed of rotation is going to be distance divided by time. So in the uh, actual lab report, you can carry out calculations over here, just explaining a little bit how to proceed with these calculations. Now, what happens if someone is going to be moving uh, I mean, it's located at some higher latitude. Remember, equator is latitude zero. And then as one moves to the North Pole, we have the latitude 90 degrees at the North Pole. And then latitude in between, somebody standing somewhere will go in a smaller circle, right? Meaning a smaller radius, meaning covering less distance in the same time interval. So we expect to find the highest rotational speed at the equator and then as we go higher in latitude the rotational speed decreases and then you have a question regarding what would be the speed of a student sitting exactly at the north pole the other part of the assignment is going to be to determine the orbital speed carefully the units in miles per hour this time, your circumference is going to be this larger circle having a radius of 93 million miles. And then it takes one year to cover this circumference. And then in order to, to calculate the orbital speed, one has to do the 2 pi times the radius over here in miles, right? And then divided by the time, but over here, you want to have the time in hours to so figure out how many hours in one year.